Hello everyone, I'm David, part of the Australian Student Christian Movement, and we have a special guest with us. Can you tell us who you are, please? Hi there, um, my name's Tamara Orahi, and I work in communications for Opus Day in Australia. Excellent. And before we go, I just want to acknowledge the lands and on which we both meet and sort of um, acknowledge our elders past, present and emerging. Can you tell us who founded Opus Day? Sure. So um, his name was Jose Maria Scriva and he was a Spanish priest. So he was born in 1902 in Spain. Um, and he just, as he wanted to be an architect when he was a child, but later realized that he felt like God was calling him to do something else. And yeah, it was, I guess, revealed to him in prayer that God wanted him to found this institution called Opus Day. Excellent. Now, I've read that there's an emphasis on the laity you're serving in the community. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, so Opus Day, so St. Jose Maria, for example, is called the saint of ordinary life. So the whole message of Opus Day is that we can strive to be holy and to be closer to God through our daily normal lives. So in the past, I think there there may have been the thought that in order to become a saint, we have to be a nun or we have to be a priest and leave the world to an extent or leave the kind of normal lives of people to an extent and step away and pray more and so on and so forth in order to be holy. But St. Jose Maria saw very clearly that, you know, God wants all of us to be close to him in whatever we're doing. So, uh, for example, I am a mom. I have three young kids. So in my daily life, how can I be close to God? I can change that nappy with a smile on my face. I can blow the dishwasher once again, but cheerfully because I'm doing that for love of God and love of my family. So it adds that extra meaning. And so the idea is that literally no matter what you're doing, what your profession is, or if there's no profession, you are able to serve God, whether you have a collar or not. Exactly. Just in your daily life, every moment of our day can bring us closer to God if we if we want it to be that way. And yeah. have you found people are receptive to that or are they like, oh, I thought it was more you have to be a priest? Uh, I think um, in this day and age, people are receptive to that message because, um, yeah, that's not what we are all called to. Everyone has a different part to play in the world and just because we're not a priest or a nun doesn't mean that we can't do that for love of God. But I think when San Jose and Maria founded the work, uh, which we call Opus Day, we say the work because Opus Day means work of God. Um, I think when he founded it at that time, it was a very new concept because in at that moment, everybody that, you know, joined an institution of the church um, took a vow and we don't take any vows in Opus Day. It's to, we're most, the majority are lay members. And can you yeah. tell us more if people are interested in getting involved in Opus Day, what mm. the formation looks like. Yeah, sure. So Opus Day's main goal is to bring spiritual formation to people. So, uh, for example, um, doctrinal classes to learn more about the Catholic faith, um, talks. I think a big part of Opus Day is also learning if we're living, you know, if I'm being a Catholic, I'm not just a Catholic on Sunday. I'm a Catholic every day of the week in everything that I'm doing. So how do I apply my Catholic faith? to the things that I do every day. Um, so talks, we have something called recollections once a month, which is where uh, priests will do kind of like some guided prayer. Um, you can go to confession if you would like to. Um, and then there might be a talk on something like it, it could be as practical as cheerfulness or um, uh, humility like or hard work, working hard in your profession, that kind of thing. Um, and then also people can go on retreats if they would like for a couple of days um, to spend a bit of time, you know, away from the world, just some, you know, good one-on-one -on -one time with God, I suppose. Um, and also spiritual direction. The priests of Opus Dei are quite happy in confession to have a chat to you about, you know, how you're going in your spiritual life and if you have any questions. Yeah. Well, excellent. Now, you mentioned... The Catholic faith, so of course, the, the foundations is, is the Catholic faith. Does, does Opus Dei have any specific beliefs that go beyond the, the kind of fundamentals of the Catholic Church? Like I read you have the love of freedom as one of the, the beliefs. Can you tell us a bit more about that? 
Well, in terms of what Opus Dei's beliefs are, I suppose, it's completely within the Catholic Church. So the core of Opus Dei is living our Catholic faith to our very best ability. But, yes, there are certain things that are emphasised, for example, ordinary life um, and, yes, love of freedom, the fact that we it's very respectful of everyone's freedom. No one is forced to join or become a member. It's not like that at all. Um even if you are a member, you know, who you vote for or where you work or where you send your kids to school should not be something that Opus Dei has an opinion on. All they're trying to do is help you be a better Catholic. Um, some of the other things that are kind of a big part of Opus Dei is, say, divine filiation, which is which just means knowing that we are a child of God and living accordingly. Um what else? Unity of life, which I mentioned before, which is about being the same person everywhere, like the same person in Sunday mass as I am when I'm out to dinner with my friends. Um, and I guess charity and apostolate, which is loving other people, loving everybody. And, um, you know, apostolate, I guess, is if we have this beautiful faith and this gift, being open to sharing that with other people. So it's not something you keep for yourself. You want to you know, if others ask about it, be open about it. And you talked about the unity belief, the, the idea that you should be the same person in all areas. Mm. Why was that needed in the first place? Why is that? Why is there that division in some people's mind? Yeah, I I don't know if this is something that has always been around, but I feel like so, a lot of people say, yeah, I'm a Catholic, I have faith, but they'll pick and choose where that applies. So you know, I love God and I go to Sunday Mass, but I'm angry at my brother, so I'm not going to talk to him, even if he wants to talk to me. It it doesn't make sense. If we love God, we want to act as Jesus act, uh, acted or acts. So, um, yeah, it's bringing that into every element of life. And if I do love God and I want to be the best person I can, well, when I'm working, I'm not going to be on Facebook for half of my time at work I'm gonna actually do my work because that is just that is what's owed to my employer or if I'm with my kids I'm gonna try and be the best mom that I can be in that moment so our faith is does not just exist when we are in church I think it's important that it's everywhere and yeah maybe that's something that people still need to wrap their heads around a little bit and how do they get you to be mindful of that like what does the training look like when it comes to um, the idea yeah, with the unity of life idea, I think it's just, and with, so for example, members of Opus Day will go to a, like a weekly kind of talk. Um, so it's kind of like a, just a consistency thing, a little reminder of how we're trying to live our lives. And um, I would say that, say the topic of uni life would come up quite often because we do want to be the same person everywhere. We don't want to, you know, be two-faced. Mm -hmm. That's definitely not what Jesus was. Um so, yeah, I think it's through that formation and the ongoing formation and spiritual direction where we can chat to people and, you know, get their opinions on things that we, we have so much support. Now, you mentioned charity before. Can you give us an idea of the kind of charity projects that Opus Dei has? Yeah, so Opus Dei itself is engaged in spiritual activities, but then they're in the centres of Opus Dei, for example, they can run activities for young kids, summer girls' clubs or you know, where kids can go and study after school. Um, something quite common is visiting a local nursing home um, just to cheer up people that might be lonely. Um, in terms of other bigger ones, for example, when I was younger, I did a service project in the Philippines. So three weeks in the Philippines, um, we I think we built toilets in a very, very kind of poor area we helped in some educational initiatives and some medical ones um and honestly you go there thinking you're going to help all these people but you learn so much from them because they don't have much but they're so happy so yeah so definitely things like that which are amazing and such a yeah such a beautiful experience and the feedback that you get from people who do these service missions are there any sort oh. of common uh, themes that come to you I think the thing I hear the most is that they thought they were going, you know, as a service to somebody else, and it is to teach them to serve others as well. It's a very big part of it. But they come back feeling like they have gained so much. They've learned so much. They've had this whole experience and just 
um, yeah, just broaden their horizons a little bit. And, you know, young people these days, we can be very caught up in what I want and what I need. And, um, yeah, we really want to open people's eyes to serving others, loving what others. You, what do you remember the most from your service trip? In, oh, I've done a few. So I've done the Philippines and mm -hmm. I went to India also and also in Australia, like to Dubbo running, you know, youth kind of camps for um, the communities out there. Oh, honestly, I th I think I remember the joy of it. You learn. One thing I try to teach my kids is you, happiness comes from serving others, not from thinking about ourselves. And you really learn that there. And just the beauty of people that don't have much but are willing to give you everything. That is huge. Yeah, that's absolutely probably the biggest takeaway. And the most recent one that you've done? The most recent was probably, I think it was India. Um, it's It was a few years back now before I got married. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was really, oh, I don't know, seeing another country and the culture is just amazing. You're with all these other young women that are trying to be their best selves that are trying to, you know, grow as people, you know, instead of going to schoolies or on holidays, they've decided to come and give up their time. So that's one of the most beautiful things. And, yeah, just learning about that that thing of service, I think. No, I've read that non-Catholics mm -hmm. can help Opus stay. Can you tell us more about that concept of that people who are not Catholic or not members of Opus Dei can actually get involved? Yeah, sure. So the members of Opus Dei are all Catholic, but that is more like just like someone might see that they God is calling them to be a priest, we might see that God is tr calling us to live our faith in this way. But for what we call cooperators, they are people that I suppose cooperate with the work, where um, they see the good that the work is, that Opus Dei is doing, they see that it's helping people, that it's running these amazing projects, and they want to help in some way. So generally, I mean, first and foremost, if they do pray, we ask for prayers. Um, but they can also contribute financially if that is possible for them because a lot of the formation that Opus Dei gives is for free. So there's not a lot of money in the background. Um, and the other thing is just like by their work, for example, if there is a service that they can help Opus Dei with. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit more about what happens in Australia in terms of either charity projects or formation or events that you put on? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, again, like I said, Opus Dei run, itself runs the spiritual activities, but it has something called corporate works, which is basically if a member or someone related to Opus Dei feels the need to start an educational or a charitable institution or a cultural a cultural institution, um, so it's not really under Opus Dei, but it will entrust any formation, Christian formation that's happening there to Opus Dei. So, for example, there are some schools in Sydney that um, they're not run by Opus Dei, they're independent schools, but the chaplains are from Opus Dei. Mm -hmm. And then there are, there's like also things like um, hospitality colleges, um, university residences, um, yeah, stuff like that. Well, excellent. Yeah. Now, can I ask you about, because we're the Australian student Christian movement, sort of the young adults, and mm. what's your experience with young adults? Are they asking you the same kind of questions? What are they telling you about their experience with Opus Dei or, or the Catholic faith? Yeah, I think, um, I think that Opus Dei has been quite helpful for young people because it takes the church from this you know, it takes their faith from just this Sunday mass kind of approach to I can live this in my everyday life. I can deepen my faith. I can grow closer to God. It's very, I would say it's very practical, which I think is very appealing to young people because young people have big hearts and they have big ideals and they want to live well. And sometimes it's, you know, yes, I love God, but now what? So it can be very helpful in um, saying, you know, the ways, one of the ways we can try and live closer to God is to go to Mass each day. So members of Opus Dei go to Mass each day. Um, they try to say the rosary each day. They might do a little bit of spiritual reading or personal prayer. So it it really gives 
um, I guess, a good structure to help us to grow, grow closer to God. So I think it is appealing to young people in that way. Excellent. Thank you so much for spending the time with me to tell us uh, more about Opus Dei. No worries. I hope I answered your questions. <laughs> you did indeed. Okay. <laughs>